I'm Rob Brown from Racetech. Uh, we're going to work on uh, adjustments and what adjustments do and how to properly set your clickers. Uh, first we're going to start off with the screw here in the middle of this blue nut. This is what we consider the low speed compression adjuster. Um, the nut here, the blue nut, is a high speed adjuster. There's also an outer part here which looks like a nut. That part disassembles the shock so we never want to touch that component. The other parts we have here is the preload rings. Um, those will be for setting your sag. If you raise it up it will lower your sag. If you push them down further it will raise your sag. Um, the other thing we'll talk about is the rebound adjuster which is located on the bottom of the shock on most motocross shocks currently. First we'll start with the low speed compression adjuster. The way you're going to want to do it is checking your adjusters to see where you're currently at is you're going to want to turn it in, screwing it clockwise, and to see how many clicks it takes to bottom out. So I'm going to start with that. We'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and we have a little bit of tension on this one. So what I do is I back up and that would be considered 11 clicks. We'll want to note that. So now we're going to actually set our adjuster on this and what we're going to do is I'm going to say that we want this adjuster at 10. So what I'll do is I'll screw it all the way in. I feel a little bit of tension. I'm going to want to back up. Basically what you have is you have a needle closing off a hole and you don't want to ruin the needle. So what you're doing is going find a little bit of tension, backing off whatever it is to the next click and we count that as zero. So after you know that you're at zero, then I'm going to say 10. Well one of the things you can do to make your job a lot easier and it's easier to keep track of clickers is I find out how many clicks it takes to do a half a turn. So what I'll do is I'll go one, two, that's a half a turn. Now I know I'm at two, but I'm looking to get to 10. So what I will do is now that I know a half a turn is two clicks, what I will start at is in my two, and I'll go four, six, eight, 10. One of the reasons that I do that versus every single click, it's a lot easier to keep track of. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our high speed adjuster. Show us actually have a dot on the high speed adjuster, which will tell you where it's currently located. Um, that works fine, but you never know exactly where it's going to index. So what I will do is first I will count how many turns it takes for me to do it. And I can put a simple dot on it or whatever on the blue one. But at this point I have a dot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it in. I'm going to count how many turns it takes to go in. This one does not have clicks. So this I will screw it in. And I have a half. I have one. I have a half. And I have two. What you can do is to make this a lot easier when testing, is you can actually put a dot, what I recommend is just putting a little black line at 12 o'clock. You're never actually gonna put a wrench on the face of this, so it will always stay there. I put it at 12 o'clock because you always know where you're at and where zero is, and you know if you're at a quarter or a half from that point. So what I'll do is, I wanna set this at two turns, so what I'm gonna do is turn that back out, and now I can do it on full revolutions, go, okay, that's one turn, where my line's at at 12 o'clock, and that is two turns. That makes it a lot easier to keep track. Even with the high speed adjuster, you still want to go until you feel a little bit of tension. Stop there, don't go any further. If you don't have a click, you don't have a reason to back it off. Next, we'll go into the, high, or the rebound adjuster here. And what we'll do is the same thing. We'll count how many clicks it takes to bottom out. So this one, I'm going to do the same thing counting it in, which is actually I'm going to count how many turns or how many clicks per half a turn I receive. Starting with that, I go one, two. That's a half a turn. So now that I'm at two, I'm going to go two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12, and I just get the slightest bit of attention on 12. If I had tension between 11 and 12, what I would actually do would be back up and go that's 11, and I would count that as zero. Now you can keep track of that. So now I'm gonna go back to where actually zero was, and I have a little bit of tension past zero. Now I'm gonna set this at 12. Again, I know that two clicks is equal to a half a turn, so I will go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. That's how you're gonna set a rebound adjuster. That's the main components to setting up a shock. Overall, our theory is the bigger the port, open it up, take the valving off the valve and put it onto the valve stack. That creates a much plusher feel, it's better on square edge bump, it tracks up better. And, and that's typically the feedback we get is, it's just amazing how much more it tracks up. A valve has a lot to do with that. Um, we also look at the support of the valve and fading and stuff like that, which we've talked about is 
our band's constantly expanding. We have a brass valve is what ours actually made out of. And by being brass, we can actually, per rebuild, we can actually surface it and make it 100% sealed again, which gives you a perfect rebuild where a lot of valves, you cannot, they have a coating on them and you cannot surface it off and the valve has, has no strength to it. So those are the main reasons we use a gold valve and uh, wanna thank you from Rob Brown at Racetech and uh, hope to see you guys soon.